Legends, and welcome to the League, exploring the League of Legends lore from A to Z. My name is Rebecca. And I'm John. And I'm Mark. And today, we get to talk about the heart of the Frel Yord, Braum, who was released May 12th, 2014. Yeah. Yeah. Nice middle of the road in terms of release date. Yeah, he's another one, because again, it's just like, if if a champion came out while I've been playing, they're brand new. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow forgetting that I've been playing on and off since like 2012 or something like right. that. I it don't... was very, very early on, honestly. <laughs> Lulu yeah. was the first champion that came out, yeah. that I remember. Which was the very first time, that, fun fact, I guess, very first time we had different login music for a champion and even then it was still just a variation of the main <laughs> league theme but made more whimsical was it really lulu who was the first one i didn't know that yeah i remember because john was really excited to show me it was before i even was playing league and he was like okay but you have to see this we've been dating for like two weeks or something like that and he was really hyped Ooh, busting yeah. out the lulu music <laughs> two weeks in Ooh. <laughs> I know what the lady's like. <laughs> and she's one of my favorite champions, so I guess she did know. <laughs> so on the universe page, Brahm has a bio and one short story called Tomb of the Troll Boy. There's also a video, Trials of the Poro, although he's in a lot more videos. That's the only one that's linked on the universe page. There's a number of concept art, I think more than most champions. They have a lot for him. And they linked his login music, which I forgot how delightful Braun's lo- uh, Braun, Braun's login music is. Yeah, for sure. I feel like it's it, it's almost the unofficial Freljord theme, although they have their own Freljord theme. But that's the one I always associate with it is that, that tune. Oh. Yeah. It's too whimsical to be the Freljord theme, I feel like. Yeah. It's so chipper. I think the one, they have a whole little video on their channel about the, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, John, the one where they, they go into how they put together the music of the Freljord, and it, that one's a lot more, I don't know. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Although I feel like with all that we play ARAM, that's just kind of become the <laughs> Freljord music for mm. us. Yeah, that's a good point. That's true, Yeah. That's fun. So Brahm's another uh, simple one we get to talk about this week. And because we've talked about the Freljord so much, we don't really have to dive back into all of that hot mess. So this will probably be a quick one. But if we want to start with the bio, who wants to take us through that uh, delight? Uh, I think I said I, w- I would do it. And John like <laughs> okay. super like he's not prepared. So I'll, I'll do it. It's not a big deal. They're, um, it, it, yeah, Brahm's pretty simple. And he's not really connected to much of that big Freljord stuff anyway. He's pretty, he's pretty contained, kind of like a. Or is he? Or or oh well, that's a fair. Okay, well, well, hmm, interesting, <laughs> curious. Hmm. Okay, so uh, so Brom's bio. So Brom was a was a big boy, growing up in the Freljord. They mention how he's always bigger and larger than his people his age, the children his age. He's always a a, a big one. And uh, one day, or I guess at a moment came where an enemy tribe who had regularly raided Brom's tribe was ravaged by ice giants and and brahm's mama brahma as i was calling her (laughs) uh, without hesitation went out and to to help them and this was very transformative for brahm because you know we kind of questioned why would you go help these people who have you know been such dicks to us in the past but the two tribes ended up becoming longtime allies so this kind of cemented his perspective of oh everyone in the frail is a big family and we should always be trying to you know bring everyone together right uh as Brom grows up, it's mentioned that he is an Iceborn, so he's one of those Iceborn that we talked about before, and he becomes essentially like a local hero, helping people out, and you know gets so big that eventually he's got to go out into the <laughs> world, right? He's got to got to make out on his own and go help people out elsewhere. So he does. He goes out and helps people, and as he does, the the tales of his feats start to become sort of mythic in proportion. Things that are obviously not true, like him being able to chop down a whole forest with his bare hands in one day, um, <laughs> shit like that. Tales about how he got his, his shield, and you know, Brom it specifically says embraces these, even though they're not seemingly founded entirely in fact. But his his perspective is that oh, if it's going to inspire someone to <laughs> acts of great kindness, why let the truth get in the way, right? So eventually, Brom <laughs> heads to uh, Rackle Steak. Is that how y'all were pronouncing it in your heads? Rackle Steak. 
You know, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> Rockle Stocker. <laughs> that was one of the words that I like. I saw and immediately it was like, not even gonna try and pronounce it in my I, head. I did, but the problem was it stood out. It was so harsh compared to the rest of the language of the the bio that oh god. It yeah, really I'd be stood curious out. to have someone who who wrote this the specific word tell me how it's supposed to be pronounced and maybe we're just I'm just completely off. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he went there to go listen to Ash speak. Uh, this is where going back to the Ash bio, we find out that you know Brom had. Seen Trindamir losing his shit in the fighting pits one day, and Brom jumped in to help the victim. And once Trindamir cooled down, the two became fast friends, and Brom then played matchmaker between Trind and Ash. Or, yeah, Trind and Ash. So <laughs> that's kind of where that happens. And then it also is mentioned that even though he doesn't hold a particular tribal alliance, you know, seeing Ash speak, he kind of sees her as here's someone who could actually, you know, end the fighting and bring people together. Uh, so the Avarosans have sort of informally adopted him. And also, the Frost Guard, you know, Lysandra's folk, are hostile towards him, specifically ever since he started carrying that, that door shield around. <laughs> and he's not sure why. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> but that's, that's the bio. That, that's, that's Brom's bio, anyway. Yeah, so how, how do we feel about our, our good old buddy Brom? I like it. He, so I like that he views kind of all, he's, he shares Ash's view, where like he views all of Freljord as just kind of one big family and he's out to kind of protect them all, which is a little different than the way that Ash is planning on doing it. But it's it's nice to be like, hey, we're we're all in this together. And like, yeah, we fight. We fight all the time. <laughs> but that's cool because a little fighting is good for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Ash, yeah. She has a very open door. Anyone can join our our group kind of policy, I guess. Yeah, it makes sense that they would kind of their goals align, but like you said, John, he is much more kind, I guess you would say, whereas Ash is a bit more practical, I would guess. I'd be curious to see the two interact, I guess. I liked, I liked the bio. I feel as though, however, that... What am I trying to say? A lot of what I like about Brom and his personality is not really expressed here a ton, and it's certainly not expressed in the story. <laughs> what I really like about Brom is his, his VO, and I think his VO carries him... 90% of the way, and I'm a little... I mean, we'll talk about this, I guess, after we've done the story, but I, I felt a little bored <laughs> reading through this lore, unfortunately. Yeah, um, I felt really shortchanged, I guess. Mm. I, I was expecting a lot more. I feel like I knew more about Brom just by playing Brom. So I was, I was assuming there was going to be more to his bio than just, he does good stuff because he likes people, but that was just the entire bio. I, I guess, like, they'll probably try to do more with the door later, his shield, which we'll talk about when we talk about the story, probably. But uh, as far as, like, I don't know. There, you don't see his personality at all. If I, I would have been so uncaring of Brom if, like, I didn't know enough about him already because of his yeah. voiceover, like you said, Mark. Mm. Exactly. Like, the... Because he, if you've played him, like his voice, like he's got a ton of charisma. He's got a ton <laughs> of enthusiasm. He's just like someone you really want to hang out with. <laughs> and I think in the story, they specifically say like, yeah, he has a really easy time making friends and he's really easy to hang out with. But uh, I mean, <laughs> I guess telling us that doesn't really <laughs> do what I think they were hoping. But like, yeah, like you mentioned, Mark, like the, the VO is great. Honestly, all of his... Um, videos all of his appearances in the cinematics they all do a really good job of that too they really flesh out the the spots that are missing here which i like a lot you know it's interesting you say that i guess because i don't necessarily i don't necessarily agree at least with the uh specifically the mm -hmm. tales of runeterra one i think it's kind of a missed mm -hmm. opportunity should we hit the story just real quick so that we can kind of talk about this as a whole because it's really yeah short it's a retread it is. essentially of mm -hmm. Um, I'll just do it here real quick. Um, so, Tomb of the Troll Boy, no author credit on the universe page as per as per usual. But yeah, but the wiki page. This is actually by our friend Leslie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Leslie Sullivan Heights for just the full credit. Um, I, that was really surprising. I was like, I know that name. The story is fine. <laughs> My complaints have nothing to do with the writing of the story. I mean, uh, real quick summary. It's a bedtime story where a grandmother is telling her grandkid. One of the, the one of the tales of Brom because there's a bunch, 
And it, it just goes over how he got his shield, where, you know, a troll boy got trapped in a mountain behind this, this you know, ancient door. Brom came to help, but couldn't get past the door. Sat and thought about it for five days, which is kind of a long time for a child <laughs> to be stuck. I don't know. They're trolls. Maybe they're hardier, one would assume. <laughs> it's like a camel. <laughs> yeah, right. And those humps full of... Ugh. Where's the universe page on troll anatomy? Where's the water hump, Riot? Well, speaking Cowards. of troll anatomy... Well, we'll talk about that. Um, gosh. No. And then, you know, Brom, thinking outside the box, punches through the mountain, which is a, a fun enough visual, and... Saves the kid, uses the door as a shield in a way that it's not really clear to me how he was able to. Well, I'll finish it. Uh, I have, I have <laughs> there's, there's questions I have, uh, but he, he, he saves the troll boy. Then that's the end of it, right? I mean, it's, it's a really short thing in terms of what happens. And like I said, yeah, my big... he was impressed by the shield, so he now he carries it around. Yeah, exactly. And it's now his, it's mm-hmm. his thing, right? And, and my biggest complaint I said way at the start was that it's a retread. It's we've we already heard a little bit about this in the bio and this is another it's like the exact same thing we got in the bio where it's just people talking about these epic tales of Brom and it's it doesn't do anything to get that personality across that we love so much you know well if you don't like hearing about it a second time you're really not gonna like oh god the third time <laughs> what there's a third one time it was on Brahm's little micro site when he was released. Oh <laughs> They're telling more Christ. stories about Brahm, but this story comes up again. So this works really well for a Mumu because a Mumu is just a legend that it doesn't have any connections with people and no one really knows anything about him. Like we said, he's a ghost story. Why is it like this for Brahm? Brahm's still alive. He's hanging out. He has friends. Does he have a girlfriend, boyfriend? <laughs> I don't know. Like, give me connections to him. I think that made it particularly difficult for this story because, I mean, we haven't necessarily talked about it yet, but this is also, this is clearly, it's it's implied, I think, pretty heavily. This is the cave and the door from Orin's bio or Orin's short story. and in, Which thankfully y'all read because of Anivia. <laughs> and in that story, the troll who is stuck in the mountain is not a young baby troll. It is specifically described as the oldest troll in the entire world. <laughs> now, was he stuck in the mountain? Because I, I did reread the Orn story to confirm. And yeah, definitely sure this is the door. I think that goes without question. But the way I read the story was that the troll was not able to get in. Like, the whole the whole kind of twist being that Orn had gotten tricked, right? Had gotten robbed of his time. So he made the door and he made it super well, but he didn't put any way to get in. And so he kind of robbed the troll of his... Because it was the troll's riches and shit that were in that cave. So that, as far as I read it, was that that... I don't remember the troll's name. Uh, could not get in to get his stuff. So he, got, he kind of tricked him back. Which raises question mm-hmm. as to how this troll boy got in, right? Is this Did the door open? I know in, in this story, the, the, the grandmother mentions, oh, the ice witch, Lysandra, had cursed it, so it was a trap. Maybe. Yeah, it it makes it it makes it tough. Like I definitely like like you mentioned, I like having the the legends for old demigods, but I would have liked. Brom's just a dude. I would have liked to have learned more <laughs> about the, the actual stories that <laughs> informed these legends. And you can tell us like over time the tellings got more extreme. But I want to know what happened. That's why I'm reading this lore. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm fine with it. The, yeah. I'm fine with the bio having these mythical stories and never getting the the actuals. I just wanted the flavor story to help reinforce that that voice that that Brahm has, not even literally, yeah. but just his personality, charisma, like like he said, and it just being the same thing of here's another mythic story about Brahm. I don't know. It doesn't do anything else for me. So short yeah. change. I think it good. might be due the fact that. All of the stories are like third person. I think we mm-hmm. don't we don't get any first person Brahm stories really, which makes it harder for his personality to come through. I'd like a first person Brahm yeah, story. Yeah, I was gonna say this is the first one that I'm like, I actually don't want an outsider's perspective. I want this from Brahm's point of view. It would be really, really cute and I think super fun to play with that voice. Sure, definitely. I think mm-hmm. I think just any sort of situation, because one thing I really like about Brom is how kind-hearted he is and how his whole shtick is finding uh, allies from, from enemies, right? And being able to bring people together. So I would love a little steam lit of, say, I had, like I had in my head, 
oh, a hunter on the frail yard getting attacked by a big monster. And Brom, you know, comes and saves them. And then as the hunter is going to turn around and kill that monster, it's like, oh, well, the monster's just defending its, its young or something like that. Being able to kind of bring people who are fighting together, right? Or, or whatever. There's a million things you could do with something to really reinforce that aspect of him. Yeah. I do also like, I think actually, because uh, I, I hadn't listened to as many of his in game quotes, I think, because I didn't play him as much. Um, but I think the perception that I had was he was always kind of like a gentle giant um, and protected people, but was fairly nonviolent. <laughs> but that is definitely not <laughs> not the case <laughs> after. <laughs> kind of reading more about it like I do love that he is not a bully and he's not inherently like a, a, I guess a violent person but he sure as hell a fighter he enjoys a good tussle as much as the next guy <laughs> yeah he has no problem solving problems with fists but you know that's just because family fights <laughs> yeah I mean I I like that I think his VO to me always I I think of him as you know he's the hero that we need for league because his VO is supposed to reinforce that this is a game and we're supposed to be having fun playing League of Legends, right? <laughs> it's very meta almost when he's like, oh, sometimes we'll fight against each other and sometimes we'll fight together, but it's fun. That's the point, right, is that we're having fun. So whenever I play Braum, it always makes me feel so cheery inside. And I just wanted some more of that from, from all this, which we didn't really get. Yeah, yeah. I also, it reminded me, I was kind of reminded of some of the complaints I had last week when we were talking about brand, um, something that I kind of talked about was I really wanted to see a, a character who comes from a difficult traumatic background and overcomes that or learns to deal with it and doesn't become a villain. And it was nice to read about Brahm, who is a hero, but he does come from a loving family, a loving background. He learned it from his mom. So, I, I yeah, I, this did just reinforce my, like, disappointment in the kind of lazy way that they write villains um like i love i love a villain that has a a backstory that makes you kind of painfully root from them for them but i am getting tired of people going through trauma and becoming villainous for it <laughs> and I, I really need them to do something else because in my experience trauma tends to make you more empathetic not less sympathetic so i think it's kind of lazy you know, not to skip ahead, but I'm, I think you might, I, I don't know, but I think you might find that in Nunu or we might be very, like pleasantly surprised when we get to Nunu because the little bit that I picked, because his lore has cropped up in Anivia and he actually mentions Brom in his, his other story. Um, the little bit that I've kind of plucked out is that it seems like Nunu has definitely gone through some stuff, like has lost his family, but is super upbeat and, I mean, he's a kid, but he's still very... You know, he sees himself as a hero, and I, I would be excited to, to get to that, to see if that kind of yeah. sinks there. That's really yeah, cool. Yeah, I know. I've been kind of, like, holding out hope for the idea, but I don't know. Just, we, we, Brom doesn't have a lot, so I kind of wanted to voice my, my current pain with the situation of a lot of the, the backstories that we're getting is this idea that if you go through traumatic experiences, you're you're going to be a villain, I guess. Um but yeah, I don't know. We, we are still very early on, so I, I am hoping <laughs> yeah. that we'll get better better stories there. But. Yeah, I think you got a really good... It's a really good call out, though. Um, it's something that we should definitely keep our, our fingers on the pulse on and see if, mm -hmm. if it persists or if we start to find exceptions to it. So... Yeah, and not that we, I mean, like, Akali has had a rough life, but she also has support, like we've talked about with Ash, too. She's mm. had it tough, but she's also had a lot of support. I don't know just been on my on my mind <laughs> no definitely for sure now very important part of brahm's lore in mm -hmm. particular is he wants to retire and become a poro herder yeah mm -hmm. so driving motivation <laughs> <laughs> it's fair it's a fair point <laughs> did he did he get released like with the howling abyss i'm trying to remember because I, I know poros so. Poros came about because they were going to be on the Howling Abyss. And I know that Braum was... I think the first time we saw a Poro was with Braum, right? In that video? The one that's on his universe page? I honestly couldn't tell you. The I should have looked it up. The of the Poro. 
I yeah, know. I don't know exactly when. It's entirely possible because I know that definitely like the the association there is like Brahm and the Poros. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have an earlier association with Poros before that. Doesn't necessarily mean that they came out at the same time, but I think it's I think it's likely. I was just curious. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, it makes me really genuinely wonder now i'll have to go look it up later so i'll go into a bit of the cinematic stuff because like we mentioned he is in a bunch of shorter videos um some of them are directly kind of story based with him some of them are more of like an ensemble type cinematic some of the most recent ones actually i'll I'll start with the ones where that were on release of him i guess that's a better place to start so trial of the poro was one of the ones released around the time he was. Uh, basically, this cinematic is a cute little Poro just trying to eat a Poro snack. And there's like a battle raging all around it. It's just trying to get this one little snack, but it kept getting inter- getting interrupted by bodies falling on the snack and arrows falling. Then there's a massive volley of arrows that are surely going to kill this poor little Poro. But then out of nowhere, Brom comes and blocks them all with his shield. And he also tussles the Poro's hair into a little mustache, which is an interaction you can have with Brom on the Howling Abyss if you feed the Poro's Poro snacks. Yeah. They will gain a Brom mustache. Yeah, it's a nice little detail. I love this this little cinematic, by the way. This is the most Brom of anything, I think. Let's see. Now, Feats of Brom, I'm pretty sure that was the release microsite. It's uh, kind of a stylized cinematic where it's more... Uh, more animated, I guess. Uh, but it goes through a few kind of tall tales that are told about Brahm and just animates them simply. Um, a few things I liked about this, they in the bit where they said he can chop down trees with his bare hands, they have him essentially kind of splitting wood by just like punching it, which made me immediately think of Captain America, who does that exact same thing. <laughs> Uh, this is also the first instance of that we get of Brom snowboarding on his shield, which we're going to see again in a later cinematic. That is true. That is a neat move for them to, to leverage. All right. So he was in a few snowdown cinematics, too, in 2016 and 2017. Um, these, these weren't, like, fully, I guess, produced cinematics. They're more kind of, like, in-game graphics that just, like, tell a story. Uh so the 2016 one, the Poro King has sent a Poro out to find, quote, the one with the magnificent mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so the Poro is kind of walking around the rift. It's encountering other Snowdown champions, not finding them with glorious enough mustaches. So it passes them all on. And then it's attacked by Snowdown Ziggs. But right before he's about to be defeated, Brom shows up with his glorious moustache yeah that's that was a santa brahm skin uh that's actually the first instance of the poro king game mode on howling abyss that's when that cinematic came out i'm glad you mentioned santa brahm though you can't talk about brahm and i'll talk about daddy santa yeah (laughs) i will say daddy santa that vision in my head actually caused me to misremember santa draven until like (laughs) today so I'll, I'll hop into it real quick 2017 the story is that brahm is out of commission santa brahm's out of commission they need to find a new santa so you know santa draven steps up he's not good at it um but this entire time i could have sworn that santa draven was also shirtless but that he had the santa jacket <laughs> And I saw him in the cinematic with like this green shirt that goes it's like goes all the way up I was like what he doesn't have a shirt. So I looked up pictures. And I was like, he's had a he's had a shirt this whole time. You've been like gaslit. Santa Brom ruined me. <laughs> we don't play that skin as much. We always play we play Santa Brom a lot though. Every time I run it in a Ram, or a lot of times when I run it in A Ram, somebody in chat will just be like, "Damn, that Brom skin." <laughs> well, if you got it, flaunt it. So there's a few others. The Raid was a cinematic that came about with the Legends of Rune Terror release. Um, and this is the one that is actually more, it's very specifically geared towards Braum. Um, so it, it opens with a War Mother um, and, you know, one of her uh, Heartsworn, I guess, was the impression I got, and her child 
running away from a, a legion of the Frost Guard, and Brahm is there too. And the War Mother gives the baby to the Heartsworn, who immediately gets shot by the Frost Guard. He goes down like a chump. <laughs> so, he takes he takes God, one arrow really goes and down. he takes it in the shoulder in the way the protagonist <laughs> arrow, where you expect him to get up. And I was like, oh no, I guess that's it. <laughs> Didn't have the will yeah, to live. Clearly a background character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the the war mother, as she's trying to get to him, also has her leg slashed by one of the one of the frost guards. So she's like, Brom, take the child, raise it as your own, raise it well. And then, you know, she she causes a massive explosion to hold off the rest of the flo- the frost guard, which causes a massive avalanche. And Brahm's like nah we got this so he climbs on his trusty uh board shield and he and the baby take off down the mountain sledding away and they manage to pick up the war mother and then Braum puts a shield up to block the rest of the avalanche and everyone is safe and sound okay so i kind of complained about this one um, <laughs> I do like him stopping the avalanche. That's a very Brahm, like a, that's a feat of Brahm. That would be something that some grandmother would tell her granddaughter about. But he's having this whole narration and spiel about, you know, in the frail yard, we're one big family, families fight, which is okay. But he's like hurling motherfuckers off a cliff. Like those guys are <laughs> fucking dead. There's absolutely no way those guys are going to survive. And it, it runs a little contrary to it. I would love it to be something a bit more... A bit more like the Trindamir interaction, where I, I just want Brom to always be friends with everyone. I don't want him to actually kill anyone. So when he's just yeeting motherfuckers, it's a little hard to be like, oh yeah. Well, I guess that was that was the cousin who we don't talk to anymore because he's a fucking oil slick on the the bottom of the. I don't know. That's like my biggest complaint with it. I think it's uh, it's Batman rules. They're fine. Yeah. You, yeah, you could throw people off buildings. They're fine. They're, they're, they're not oh, dead. That man's a chump. What? Just some broken bones. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's, you know, it. the rest of it's pretty cool. I wish they had been more comp- comedic with the baby. A baby's a great prop when it comes to an action sequence. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you laugh. I, I started thinking about this, and it reminded Spoken me of... Spoken like so. <laughs> As a group of people with no kids themselves. <laughs> Babies are great props. <laughs> A little prop for your story. <laughs> Look, I'm, it, it made me think of Xena Warrior Princess, right? Where there's like three okay. episodes where there's a baby in various across the various seasons, and they have action sequences with a baby, and it's the funniest shit you'll ever fucking see, and it's great. And I wish they had pulled some of something like a, that sort of tone with this baby, but that's that's me. I don't know. Something like Ice Age or Monsters Inc. Yeah, you know, I like to see babies in, in mortal peril, but they're. <laughs> But with a comedic slant, I don't know. But played for laughs. <laughs> so watch, ba- so baby's day out. You wanted a baby's day out <laughs> with Bro. I mean, honestly, I, yeah, I would kind of love that. Frankly, <laughs> he would make that movie really good. Yeah, that's true. Now there Brom's are day out. Brom's day out. <laughs> Brommy's day out. <laughs> the cinematics that Brom is a part of that are more um, kind of ensemble. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say montage. That's certainly not it. Uh, the, the ensemble cinematics that he's a part of are the one of the most recent cinematics that came, actually two of the most recent cinematics that came out, really. The Wild Rift one, which we talked about last week with Blitzcrank in it. He's in that one too, doing his Brahm protecting people thing. Uh, he's also in the Ruined King cinematic for the new game that's supposed to come out this year. Also doing Brahm things. <laughs> Yeah, blocking shit with his giant shield. Not like even Rom he too. punches it. He doesn't even I mean, block it's it. Got. It's dope. <laughs> you know what else I like about that cinematic is they have that little. He gives that little side eye to a yaoi, and it keeps it keeps that uh that yaoi Brom ship a sailing, as it were. Yeah. Oh, that's a ship. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at a yaoi's quotes, her whenever she taunts Brom, she's pretty explicit. She, <laughs> man, I wrote down something. Like that. She's slobbing for a doorknobbin. Is how. <laughs> Wait, is that one of her quotes? No, that's... <laughs> that should be. <laughs> I'm slobbing for a doorknobbing, bro. <laughs> that, that, that definitely sounded just like a Lowie, right? too. Yep. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, they have big, beefy babies. Yeah, talk about mm-hmm. power couple, Love goddamn. It. Damn, damn. <laughs> uh, 
This is a non brahm related note on that cinematic in particular, but if you listen to the music at exactly like 1 minutes and 30 seconds, it's got a very Ori vibe. Ori, hmm. Ori in the Blind Forest. Oh, oh so, I was thinking Oriana. No. Oh, no. It's got a... yeah, okay, we're talking about Lee. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying the music, if you've ever played Ori in the Blind Forest, fast forward to one minute and 30 seconds, it's got a, I mean, Ori's got great music, so I mean, it's a compliment, and it's not close enough that it's like a ripoff, it's just got those chill vibes, I that's, dig it. That's interesting, because A, I was listening to that song on repeat the other day, because I, 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 it is a pretty good song, I enjoyed it, but it's also, um, it shows up in a bunch of like epic, epic rock playlists, right? And I would not describe Ori in the Blind Forest as matching that tone. So that's, that's, right. that's interesting. Only at one minutes, 30 seconds. That It changes tone pretty significant. That's like the part in the cinematic where they're like sailing and approaching the, oh, the okay. you know, the ruined king. Interesting. Oh, okay. So hmm. it changes pretty dramatically at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alawi has a lot of taunts at specific champs. I'm wondering if they're all thirsty. Maybe Alawi's just thirsty. <laughs> it's possible. She lives near a lot of salt water. <laughs> there are motions I would like to show you. Yeah, oh, dog. shit. Uh, I know you are strong. I wonder if you have stamina. <laughs> yeah, man. This is not subtle. <laughs> yeah, she's a whore I'm for the door. A man who won't break. <laughs> she's broken some dicks. <laughs> she absolutely has. <laughs> oh, my God. Who else do you think we, she's thirsty for? Graves, maybe? Gang no, he's too small. Oh, no, oh, no. no. They, they've they got, have a, too they've much got a bad a, past. Maybe oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. You worship the sun. It is my god that drives it through the Uh-oh, sky. Uh-oh, religious zealot. Oh, god damn it. Misfortune? No, <laughs> she probably has a... Drowning. Your actions reminded him to swim. No, yeah. Uh, They've got a Scion? whole history. They have cheated you of rebirth. All right, well, she just wants to <laughs> just fuck thirsty Brom, for Brom. Oh my god, one, that is not one subtle. Man, one I thought they were going to be... Finally, a man that won't break. <laughs> <laughs> Because you know he brings a shield into the bedroom. Oh, man. I got to find that erotic, <laughs> you know, story. And if it doesn't exist, I got to write it. Right? That's, I guess. That it pretty mean, much right. It's just something you got to do. It does. <laughs> uh, so the last. I really took us off the rails. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, Mark started it. That's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> You're fired, Mark. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the other one he shows up in is just A New Journey, which uh, Ari was also in, but it's basically a... It's based on the true story of Michelle, a university student and league player who joined a college team. What? Yeah. Yeah, this is not familiar to me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a kind of cinematic about uh, a girl who joined a college league team and uh, played league. Oh, okay. One of her Michelle. teammates played Brom. Yeah. Okay, one last thing. The wiki says that Brahm is in the Rise video. I looked through it. I could not find him anywhere. I even thought maybe just his shield is like at the beginning where all those weapons are scattered. Couldn't find it. If you know where Brahm is in the Rise video, please at me. It's <laughs> killing me. John doesn't have a Twitter, so you can't. Yeah, but... I don't have a Twitter, but just that's yell. just a thing that the youths say. So, <laughs> so at me. <laughs> Find him on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Just add me on Friendster and tell me what is going on. <laughs> MySpace. Live journal. So there are... <laughs> in terms of AUs, I mean, there's there's the standard ones that obviously he's a part of. Academy Adventures that everyone's a part of. Uh, although, interestingly enough, the Academy Adventures one, he's a part of as one of or as two of his other skins <laughs> so in the much like in the same one that azir showed up in when echo chrono broke the school at a museum and then it brought back a bunch of things from back in the day brahm shows up there in his knight costume oh. as knight brahm oh yeah the DD one right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, which actually does have a bit of uh, like a lower blurb attached to it which was very fun um, but then the other the other one was when the students follow Dr. Mundo, who's one of their teachers, to a, an underground uh, luchador fighting ring where Luchador Brahm is fighting at the time. I like that it's underground, I like that it's, it's seedy and illicit or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Secret luchador. <laughs> Secret, yeah. So the, the D&D story 
So the the last D and D skin also had kind of a, a little blurb to go along with it. But yeah, this one Brom is actually the DM, but is also wants to be one of the players, uh, and also clearly made the game up to kind of fulfill a personal fantasy of his. Oh, so relatable. Yeah, his his quote for his character is. And I will be the strongest, bravest knight in all the land. People will love me, and I will have infinity friends, and all the princesses will be like, Ooh, Brom Lionheart, you're so brave and handsome. Take me to the royal dance. But I'll be like, Princesses, please, I serve the weak and defenseless. I have no time for royal dances. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. I like that more than, like, almost all of the lore that we got. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) I like it more than all of the, yeah, well, definitely all of the Brom lore. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Really get much. Specific to Brom, I'll say. The only other times he kind of shows up in the, the side stories, he's on a, a road trip side story, which was actually on the, the League site for a little while. Um, with Caitlin, Zoe, and Graves are on a road trip. They end up in the Frel Yord, and they stumble upon Brom, who, again, is in his luchador costume for some reason. That's never fully explained. <laughs> uh, he invites them to a party on Aram. They have a big snowball fight. And good times are had by all. <laughs> huh. And then Dope. there was a collaborative art project for the Tale of the Poro King, where a young Poro sets out to learn how to fight so he can defeat Trundle, who is terrorizing his fellow Poros and stealing all their snacks. Aww. So they go on a journey to all the different, you know, lands, mm-hmm. uh, all the different cities, learns a little something from all of them, eventually is rescued from Darius by Brahm. And finally goes to Orn's workshop and cooks a bunch of super special Poro snacks using the knowledge it gained from its adventures, which he gives to his friends, and they all gain superpowers. And in case you're wondering, yes, this coincided with another Poro King event where feeding the king specific snacks would give the king superpowers. <laughs> I don't think I played that one. I played the first one, but I was probably not playing League at this at the time this one came out. Yeah. Oh, also I looked it up real quick and Howling Abyss was released in April of 2013. So Brom was a whole year later. Mm. Um, and I think Poros have always been on the Howling Abyss. Well, they just got such a strong connection that we just assumed. Like, yeah, of course Poros and Brom, yeah. they're like they're like this. I'm doing the fingers cross motion again. Fuck. <laughs> I feel like yeah, I could be remembering this wrong, mm. but weren't they like a surprise hit? Like they were just like Summoner's Rift has a bunch of random little critters on it too. Like Poros were just something that was on Howling Abyss and no one thought anything of it. And then all of a sudden they got really fucking popular out of nowhere. And they're like, oh, okay, we should start doing something with these Poros now. And maybe that's why they build a connection with Brom. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. It sounded like in what I was reading, they had just kind of, they needed something for flavor, mm. like uh, to offset all the icy blue and everything. And they created the Poros. And, Interesting. You, know, you never know what people are going to latch on to. Sure. <laughs> and in case you're wondering case it ever comes up or anything the proper term for a group of poros is a fluffed (laughs) and that was as a result of a legendary support project from the customer from the uh, player support team oh (laughs) that's a neat i didn't realize that part of it i had heard that fluffed word before but i know it was one of the legendary support things that's real cool yeah, a player wrote in and they asked what a group of Poros was, so uh, that team went to the lore team and they wrote a, a canon short story <laughs> that gave them the official name of Fluffed to respond to the question. That's neat. That's cute. That stuff's always real cool. Yeah. All right, do we have any more thoughts on Brom? I actually had a, a couple. So the first question that popped into my head in reading the story was how, how old is Brom? Because the grandmother says that I remember my grandmother telling me tales of Brom doing things. So, and he doesn't... Yeah, isn't he just like a regular man? I don't know. He's very big. (laughs) (laughs) He He is is very very big. big. (laughs) A man who won't break, in fact, some might say. (laughs) I don't know. But medically, that doesn't seem like... Oh, actually, so I guess one thing that... Oh, he can control, yeah. Well, he can wield true ice as well. He, he can't. Well, well he he's, has ice, a, yeah. he's ice born. He's ice born. That's one thing word. we didn't Jesus. actually talk about was the the shield frost guard connection. 
Oh yeah, and go why for it. why the frost guards actually? Is that making him immortal? Because what the fuck? Um, so I I don't know if there's anything that has said that the shield himself, the shield itself, is giving him elongated life. But I will say, in terms of why the frost guard is after him and why they consider him an enemy, I mean, their main goal is to bury and erase all proof that the old demigods ever existed um, mm. so that they lose any influence or power they might have um, as part of kind of Lysandra's ultimate cover-up to who she is and what she's doing. Um, and since in Orn's lore, we know that Orn had a, like, very specifically had an interaction with Lysandra and her two original sisters, um, finding an Orn artifact specifically is probably a cause of great great concern for the frost guard <laughs> they have yeah. definitely have a vested interest in keeping all orange shit under apps that makes sense yeah that's a, that's a good thing to highlight as far as his immortal life goes i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the lore team is just so used to writing immortal characters that they forgot brahm was just a regular man <laughs> i mean maybe he does even if we, it's hard to tell exactly how true these stories are, but they're, he still does some some pretty pretty epic shit, I guess you could say. Yeah. And he's certainly a, a bit more than a normal person, right? But so Maybe. is Ash, and she doesn't have an immortal life. That's true. That is true. She does seem to age normally. I don't know. Maybe I'm, unless I'm completely misreading that line, I was pretty sure the grandmother said, I remember my grandma telling me stories. I don't know. Maybe they're, Maybe they were stories about someone else that got kind of co-opted and attributed to Brom mm, over the time. That's Maybe. It was like his mom. Yeah. <laughs> it was Brahma. Yeah. Ma? What did you call her? Brahma? Bra- Brahma. 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 <laughs> Mother always says. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I, I something that is not clear to me, and I don't know if I'm, if I'm reading too much into it, is in both the bio and the story, they really highlight how the door is like immovable. And in the bio, they explicitly say that he can't even rip it off its hinges. And yet, in both instances, he is able to—he was able to wield it, and it's not really clear to me how. And they never really explain how it goes from being securely in the mountain to all of a sudden free floating. Yeah, I—I I sort of—I think it was an oversight, but I kind of imagined that when he punched through the mountain and the mountain started to fall, it just kind of like wasn't attached to the mountain anymore because the mountain didn't exist anymore, I guess. See, that's a, it's, it raises the question of what does it mean to rip the door off its hinges, right? I think you're probably right that it's an oversight. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I think <laughs> I, I'm trying to remember, too. I feel like at two... I could be remembering this wrong. I'm going to look it up real quick. If I'm wrong, you just, you just count. <laughs> I feel like at several... I, I'll remember for sure. Uh, I feel like at one point it said that he could not pull it off its hinges. And then at another point in a different story, they specifically said that he did pull it off its hinges. Yeah. Well, so the two stories. There's right. the three. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about Feats of Brahm. We have to look at the bio and see. Yeah. yeah let me. Yeah, let me see if it's in the Feats of Brahm one. Well, I think it, it kind of raises... like this. This led me to the question of are we supposed to at all infer any sort of intentional uh, deception when it comes to these stories? You know, Brahm seems to very much see, oh, there's an there's an end, you know, of people doing good acts and being inspired. So maybe it's okay to lie. Maybe it's okay to, ha- like, propagate these mythical stories about myself because it inspires people. Now, I, I think it's just an oversight, personally. Um, <laughs> but it would kind of go in line with what we saw with the, speaking of Orn, um, where there were contradictions that we thought seemed a bit more intentional between the Orn stories and the Anivia stories, and and maybe this is something similar. I don't know. It just kind of hand waves it, and it's like, and eh, he's got the shield. You know, he couldn't get it, but now he's got it. So don't worry about yeah. it. I suppose. It would have been really easy to have a line that say, like, you know, because the mountain was crumbling, the door, you know, shook free of its prison or something. I don't know. Like, yeah. it would have been so easy to put something in. For sure. It's, it's, that's true. So it's, you know, who knows, right? Who knows? Mm. Um, or even if he had just punched holes 
around where the door was instead of climbing to the top and then punching down like a yeah. madman. Yeah. I, I liked that they mentioned like, oh, he's going to punch through the mountain. And I was like, oh, cool. And then they mentioned that he climbed the mountain and was punching through the top. And I was like, why though, Brom? That's the hardest way to do it, Brom. That's the worst way. Just go three inches to the left of the that's door. That's no fun. <laughs> and punch through the mountain there. Maybe, maybe that's the thing. Like maybe he did just punch really small holes around the door mm. and then people were retelling the story and they're like, God, that sucks. Maybe he just climbed to the top of the mountain and tunneled like a mile down with his fit. That sounds cool, right? <laughs> but that's the story now. Yeah, I don't think he did that. <laughs> because punching holes in the fucking whatever. Whatever. You know what? It's a right, story they can right. tell. It. Anyone can punch holes through rock. It takes a real man to punch holes are? through lots of rock. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, I thought it was interesting <sighs> they mentioned in the bio frost giants. So I guess giants are a a thing in Runeterra as a species. Yeah, I wonder if we'll come across that more. I found it, I, I went and searched. So by the way, there being the True Damage Giants song made it really fucking hard to, to search for that, <laughs> I'll say. Uh, but there is mention of a giant in Heimerdinger's story. Apparently one shows up oh. and causes a giant tomfoolery in, in Piltover. So... Oh, that's exciting. They exist. Oh, speaking of trolls, I also found the the name of the the story a little weird. They call it the Tomb of the Troll Boy, but he's not mm. he's not dead. Why do they call it a tomb? That's a weird word to use. <laughs> <laughs> he's explicitly not dead. <laughs> I guess it was supposed to be his tomb. Also, like the actual, it sounds like what really happened was that it was an old troll who was sealed away that he released. So I guess like in that case, it was a tomb, but. Yeah, I don't know. That is a weird title. Mm. It's a catchy title. And that's a, lot why. Of, a lot of question mark pings on this one, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the word tomb because every time I read it, I have to go tomb or tome in my head. And I do the same with the word tome. I can never remember. It takes me a second every time. Hmm. hmm. Anyway, that's not the case for myself. My dumbass. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it's all good. We've all got our things. Yeah, I can't spell restaurant either. It's <laughs> a lot of vowels in there. No. <laughs> Who put all these letters in this fucking word? What the fuck? <laughs> Someone say something dumb about themselves, so I don't feel... Um, I got nothing. <laughs> it's okay. We can... I... Oh, you're both just so smart. I just, I'm just too dumb to think of something Shit. off the top of my head. It's okay. That's a good answer. I should have gone with are that. Are we good with... <laughs> Are we good with Brom? Yeah. Go listen to the VO. That's the best way to learn Brom. It's true. Oh, favorite VO line. Ooh, okay. Mother always said, float like an iceberg, sting like a thrown iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pretty good. That's so cute. Next time, I want to play Brom now. I hope I get him in ARAM tonight because we're inevitably playing later. <laughs> and I'm going to really crank up his voiceover. I always have league pretty low. All right. I think I think that's it. We uh, are done with Brom. Thank you for listening. And in wrapping up Brom, we've already wrapped up the bees, everybody. Damn. Oh, man. We are done. I didn't even know that. Yes. That was the last one. <laughs> I, right? That's my dumb thing is I don't even know which champions are in league. <laughs> <laughs> but join us next week. I'm so excited because next week we are talking about the Sheriff of Piltover, Caitlin. Girl, fuck yeah.